Good afternoon, I'm Julia. Welcome to my garden. It's a beautiful day up here today. A little bit of cloud cover, beautiful sunshine. We are going to um, have a look at harvesting some broad beans because I think some of those pods are ready and I am going to harvest the shallots. Time to do that, get them pickled. Um, I think there's some purple mange two peas that are going to need to be picked. Yeah, I can see from here there's some. So they're going to be for dinner tonight. Possibly there might be some of the um, small peas. Can't remember the name again. Douce de Provence. There might be some of the Douce de Provence that we'll need. Picking and podding today. And possibly some of the Oregon sugar pods, although I had those the other day, so they might not, there might not be any more of those ready yet. We're going to tickle tomatoes and tie in and just check for any suckers. Tickling tomatoes, as hilarious as it might sound, um, is actually a really good opportunity to check your plants, trim off any lower leaves that are starting to look like they might be giving the plant more work than they need, than it needs to do. Take off any suckers that you might see coming through and I can see some that I'm going to be removing as we go along. I'm just looking at those tiny little current tomato plants, you know, the semi-wild ones. They're getting bigger, but they're still on a... Mm. Shall we say 18 inches high to be on the generous side? More like about 14, but we'll say 18 to be generous. They're tiny. <laughs> Next year I'll grow them in a pot, I think. And that will free up more space in the bed. The taller tomatoes. Even though my tomatoes are not terribly tall at the moment, but they have started to... Now the weather's warmed up. They started to grow a lot faster. That's good. We'll have a look at the flowers that are growing. I need to do something about sorting out some brassicas ready for autumn plant, planting for the autumn and winter harvests. I haven't done any yet. Well, I've got my sprouts in and I've got some cabbages in, some red savoy cabbages, I think. Definitely savoy anyway. I need to clear out some more of the lettuces that have got a bit big. They can go to the chickens. So, it's going to be a day of tomato tickling and of checking on the health of the tomatoes. And of course, it's Wednesday, so it's tomato feeding day. So I'll do that as well. So despite the bug repellent spray, I still get bothered by the things. They drive me nuts. The garden's looking pretty. It's looking like it's getting going. Oh, I can just see some more mare's tail. Always worth sitting here, having a little look to see what's going on. There's a few clouds coming over that look like they might have a little bit of um, drizzle in them, but possibly not. They might just float by. Let's get on with it, shall we? I said I was going to do this several days ago. I'm going to harvest the shallots and see what we think. Let's start with this one. I don't think they're going to get any bigger than they actually are now. Oh, troll's hot. It's been sat in the sun for 10 minutes. Oh, they're not bad. There's no signs of any white rot. So I think they will be okay. Let's tickle out the worst of the soil from them. This one's got one that a bulb that started to form but then failed. I 
and it just got knocked over. It still made a good, no, that one's just made a tiny, tiny bulb again. No signs of any white rot. That's good. Should make some nice pickles, shouldn't they? This one's not looking that great. But, yeah, well, some small ones. Looks like we're safe from the old white rot thing. Oh, cool. They're nice. Looks like it might be one of my best bunches. I don't know if you can see. Oh yeah, that's a nice bunch of onions. Super. Okay. I'm just going to carry on and get the rest of these harvested and then I'll show you what we've got. Well, that's not too bad, is it? We've had... That was one that lost all its tops, but it was right at the edge of the bed, so I think possibly a bird had pecked the tops off. But it's given me some very small onions here. That'll be fine pickled, no problem. We've got some nice sized ones that are considerably bigger. Really, there's only two bunches that have been a bit silly. This one went, to, as you can see, through up escape. So that one will probably get used fresh. Everything else is looking pretty good. That was probably the best of the bunch. Nice, evenly sized, sized, <laughs> nice, evenly sized shallots. Perfect pickles. Lovely. So that's what I'm going to do this afternoon. I'm going to nip out, buy everything that I need for pickling. I've got most of it already in the store cupboard. I just need um, what do you, some fresh ginger. I've got everything else. Super. That's a good little harvest. I'm pleased with that. Seeing as each one of these bunches came from one set, one into two, four, six. Six times as many onions as I started out with. So that's very cool. It's quite hot today out here. I'm going to tickle my tomato. As you can see, we've got some lovely flowers going on on these tomatoes and it looks like we've got some pollinated. Apparently, if the petals close in protectively around the point where the tomato would grow it's a good indicator that you've got a tomato fertilized there so when we're tickling tomatoes Luke does it like this but I can't get the coordination right so I just literally wallop my plants so everything gets a good jiggling sometimes I use the cane depends where the plant is really and do that for a good 10-12 seconds and that encourages the pollen down onto the female parts of the flower which hang below them and should fertilize more tomatoes and I do this every day my husband thinks I'm bonkers but he'll be thanking me once he's eating tomatoes won't he We're sort of mimicking the action of a bee landing on the flower. 
it would vibrate it and knock the pollen down. And as I go, I usually take my ball of string with me and some scissors and I can tie any in that need tying in. And this one does. So I'm just going to do that. Bear with me a sec. Little bits of tomato mint as we go. Trimming leaves off if they look like they're giving it an issue. Taking out suckers. This netting seems to be working. The um, carrots that have been being packed seem to be recovering, which is good news. These plants are interesting, the black Russians. They seem to... It's definitely a truss. It's got flowers coming out along it. But also, what is weird, is that the end of it is a leaf. And that looks like it's a sucker. Hmm. Curious. And this is the Black Russian. 
He's doing it on this one as well. Let me see. Sorry. He's doing it on this one as well, see? That's a sucker, isn't it? But it seems to be coming from a truss that has terminated in a leaf. Now before I take those off, these suckers at the end, here, I'm just going to go in and do a little bit of research and see if I can find out if I'm supposed to leave that on or not. It's most peculiar, I've not seen that before I don't think. Yeah, see, the trusses on the others, they're just flower trusses. But on these black Russians, they seem to terminate in a leaf and a sucker. Wait, definitely peculiar. So, Black Russian research. That'll be a peculiar um, Google search, won't it? I'm hoping you've been, you've been able to see what I mean about them. Truss, leaf, sucker, flower. How odd! The first of the zinnias to open properly. Pretty. And it's making side shoots as well. So we should get more of the same. A very pretty flower. Incredible pink. This one needs more reds. Isn't it funny how they start off with the petals all curled up and then gradually unfurl them? It's like a ship unfurling its sails. Hmm. Very pretty. This one as well is, it got badly wet. I planted it out when we had all that um, frost, well not frost, really cold weather in June, not knowing that that really cold weather in June was coming of course, and it got absolutely, well it did not like it at all, you can see the bottom there everything went badly for it, but it persevered and it grew and it's in flower, which is rather nice, and it's putting off new shoots at the bottom, so that's good. While we're here, let me show you the Dwarf Barlotto beans are now, I hope you're seeing what I'm seeing, are now making beans. I've got quite a few that are a bit more advanced than that, but there's plenty of flowers on them now. We've got little be baby beans everywhere. which is magnificent and the later planting of I think down there are the Blue Lake are they the Blue Lake or are these the Blue Lake no, I think those ones are Blue Hill Blue Hilda and I think these ones are Blue Lake they're doing quite nicely getting away to a good start it's not that long ago that I sold them and they're at this stage already so there seems to be a little pause doesn't there they get to that stage and they go, wait for it, wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. And then they end up like those ones over there. That are now steadily making their way up the arches. <laughs> I think some of these beans are getting close to being ready to pick especially this these ones in here I want this plant I think I could do with getting them in really some of these and eating them as small beans so that these pods that are smaller higher up the plant can have the energy they need to mature yeah let's do that let's pick some peat beans shall we? Shall we start with this pod that seems to be the most advanced? 
I'll get my scissors, shall I? It's quite firmly on there. I'm going to start with some of these beans from in here. They seem to be the furthest along. Take that one as well because it's got a bit damaged. me loving the beans. That's not ready, that one is. On there for the beers as well, in fact. Both of those. It's a bit of a jungle. I think this is definitely going to help for some other pods. the energy. I think that'll do us for now. I'll just have this one from down here though. Should we have a look at what we've got? This one had been attacked by something. Let's have a look inside and see what's going on in it. See, the beans are fine. The one's further up, it's just that one. That's okay then. I'll keep that one. Those three beans are fine. Decent hole. Should we have a look? Beans. Should we open it? <laughs> I know what I'm having for my tea tonight. I'm not very professional at this, am I? Look at those babies. <laughs> They're all like that. And I got more than I thought I was going to. So if they're all like this, yum, dinner tonight. Haha. -ha. That'll be my first harvest of broad beans. Lovely. Just the right sort of age. No tough skins on them or anything. Isn't it amazing how Mother Nature makes this perfectly padded little protection space for these little broad beans? It's just, it never ceases to amaze me, this spongy layer she makes on the inside of these beans so that... Mm. <laughs> So that they're protected and they all come out perfect for me to eat. Aha! There you go. That was my first broad bean I harvest. And the shallots are looking fab. So I'm going to go and pickle my shallots. And I'll not pod any more of the peas until later on, until it's tea time. So that they stay as fresh as possible. So that's not bad, is it? Basket full of shallots and broad beans. Mmm. 
It's lovely when things start coming together, isn't it? We start getting our harvests. My first little picking of sweet peas. <laughs> Smell divine. <laughs> That's made me very, very happy.